This week I'm talking about the five things that God uses to grow our faith. And they are practical teaching, private disciplines, personal ministry, providential relationships, and pivotal circumstances. Yesterday I talked about uh, practical teaching, that it's not enough just to have information. What we seek to have is transformation. And really, because what God says is true, this is what he wants us to do and then to put it into practice. Today I want to talk about our private disciplines. What I'm talking about is those things that we do in private, where we spend time alone with God and reading his word and and seeking his face in prayer. You see, we we talk to God through prayer, but we listen to God through his word. And in Psalm chapter 32, it says this in verse beginning of verse 6, Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you in a time when you may be found. Surely in a flood of great waters they shall not reach him. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with songs of deliverance. And then in verse 8, the, the, the pronoun changes. And now it's God talking. And he says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Don't be as the horse or as the mule which have no understanding, whose trappings include bit and bridle to hold him in check. Otherwise, they will not come near to you. Here, what the writer of Psalms is telling us is, number one, talk to God in prayer. He says, seek him when he may be found. And number two is listen to God through his word, where in in verse eight, God says, I will instruct you. I will show you the way to go. You see, uh, we pour our hearts out to God in prayer and we let him know our concerns and our fears and our anxieties and our frustrations and our disappointments and our heartbreaks and and begin to ask him to intercede and intervene in the lives of, of people around us and in our own lives for his glory. But then we listen to God through his word as he speaks to us and we read God's word and ask how it applies to us. And are there sins that we need to confess? Are there promises that we can claim? Is there an attitude I need to change? Is there a prayer I need to pray? Is there forgiveness that I need to seek? And we allow God's word to speak to us because many people have said that there is a direct correlation between people's private spiritual disciplines and their public faith life. That our faith is never going to grow if we don't spend time with God alone. And I know from my own personal experiences, it's only when I have made a commitment to to spend time alone with God on a regular, on a daily basis, that I begin to see my life begin to grow by leaps and bounds. We've oftentimes heard that it's just the tip of the iceberg. Because many times what we see in people's lives is is just the tip of the iceberg. And we look at those faithful people and and we wonder how, why is it that they are so, so kind to everyone? How is it they're, they're so, so likely to forgive those who have harmed them? How is it that they always seem to be able to say the right thing at the right time in the right way? And it's all because of what is not seen. It's because they spend, uh, I can only assume, Uh, large amounts of time alone with God. And it's while God is transforming transforming us in the, the private times of life that it manifests itself in the public times of life. And our private disciplines are not going to happen because we just simply want them to happen. We've got to be intentional because this is what I know about you and I is that we're so busy and you may say, I don't have time for that. And you're right, there's a lot of things that we don't have time for. But I do know this, that the important things in our life we make time for. So I wanna encourage you today to make a commitment, to make time, to spend time with God.